Praise the Lord. You don't sit anywhere, do you? Why? Because you are conscious of the white dress you are putting on. So this is what righteousness does for us. When we are conscious of the righteousness that Christ has given us, if it is our testimony and our confession, then you are aware that you are putting it on. And it does two things for you. It keeps you from sinning, and it also keeps the evil away from you. When the Bible said, in righteousness you shall be established. Once you put on that consciousness, once you wear it to the, to the extent that it affects your actions, now when the enemy is throwing arrow, that righteousness now becomes a shield. Do you understand what I'm saying? Some of the overnight prayer we pray, you don't need to, you know, bang, bang before God protects you. Why? Your righteous shield is activated. Do you understand what I'm saying? But when a believer said, oh, I put on the armor of righteousness, and you are living contrary to the armor. Yes. Praise the Lord. The shield is open. You see that? So that is what the Bible says. In righteousness you are established. It says, and you shall be far from oppressor and oppression. Amen. You see that? Mm -hmm. Isaiah 54, 14. Praise the Lord. So when I when I begin to testify, mm -hmm. so that is why it's important. The Bible says, in righteousness shall you be established. Amen. So the moment you are established in righteousness, what, what follows? He said you shall be far from oppression. So when the enemy throw an arrow, the arrow hits your righteous sheep and they fall off. Without you praying, without you knowing, because you are putting on the righteousness. Are you following what I'm saying? He said, for you shall not fear. What does it do? That righteousness creates faith. Hallelujah. Confidence. Praise the Lord. Confidence in God. Confidence in who you are. For you shall not fear. He said, and from terror. That, that terror could also mean all the terror of coronavirus that is going on. You shall not fear. Why? Because you are righteous. For it shall not come near you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We heard the story of John Lake when they were, he was a missionary in Africa, an apostle in Africa, and there was plague were killing people. Praise the Lord. And he was working among the doctor, help burying some dead and doing. And one of they realized that he was not wearing PPE, no, no hand glove, nothing on him. And they said, What is the matter? Are you not afraid? He said, No. They said, What? He said, I'm the righteousness of God. They said, What do you mean? He said, The virus has no power over me. They said, What do you mean? He said, Let's, Let me prove it. He said, Scoop the, the virus that, that is from the people that died. They scoop it, say, put it on the microscope. They put it on the microscope, the virus were alive. He said, they scoop it and put it on my hand. They scoop it and put it on his hand. And he held it and put it back on the microscope. And he dies. They say, how? He said, the law of the spirit of life, Amen. which is in Christ Jesus, has made me free from the laws in my life. Do you understand what I'm saying? What happened? It is not because God loves him more. It is his faith in what Christ has done. It is not overnight. It is his lifestyle. Do you understand what I'm saying? It has developed that consciousness. You see, that is why sometimes as believers, when you get, just get born again, some certain things don't happen to you. Why? Because you are a babe, God shield you. So you get to a stage. Praise the Lord. You are not on your own. God expects you to do some certain things. Develop your faith. But when you don't develop it, that is why when you have those nightmares, you try to say what you used to say before it doesn't work. God said, you, are, you, are, you grow past that thing. <laughs> Use your faith. You know? So, so some people will say, oh, I remember the pastor, the man of God used to pray for me, everything would be okay. Now if you pray something, God said, now you have to pray for yourself. <laughs> In those small matters, you have to handle it and bring the big matter to your pastor. Praise the Lord. It's not every headache after three years you say, oh, pastor, I've had to pray for me. After a year, oh, pastor, I'm not feeling good. Pray for me. For the past two years. So that's when the pastor prayed, nothing happened. God said, now it's time for you to pray for yourself. Praise the Lord. Pray for yourself. Praise the Lord. Use your faith. That is what it's about. So 
A testimony of God's consciousness. A testimony of what Christ has done for me. A testimony of who Christ is, what is done for me. What is doing in me, what is doing for me, what is doing through me. This is what Apostle Paul meant by, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Why? He said, in all states I have learned to abound and obey, to suffer me the hunger. He said, I'm not moved by whatever I find. So, it, this is the process. This is the growth and the development of the Christian. This is why we come to church. This is why we come for prayer meeting. This is why we come do, do fasting and pray. This is why we give our tithes and offering. We are building our faith. We are growing. We are developing. It is all part of the package. Praise the Lord. It is all part of the package. And funny enough, not funny. <laughs> Truthful enough, uh, that is the area you build your faith. That's the area of your faith. Yes. You can have faith in this place and not have faith in this place. So that is why we develop faith in every area of our life. How? By the word of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 You shall testify. Amen. I say you shall testify. Amen. Let's stand on that. Let's thank God for the word we have. Let's ask God for grace. To walk in the light of his word. Let's ask for grace to testify. Ask God for grace. To, to correct our heart. To correct our mind. Let God correct your heart, your mind. It's only an issue of the heart. It is your conscience. It is your heart. Praise the Lord. Ask God for grace. Ask God for mercy in that prayer that you are falling short. And ask God for grace. To correct what you need to correct. Why don't we ask for grace? 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 To correct all that we need to correct. Father, we say take absolute control. Take absolute control. Father, let your name be glorified. Let your name be glorified. Let your name be glorified. I receive mercy. I receive grace. We receive mercy. We receive grace. To do the right thing at the right time. I receive mercy. I receive grace, oh God. To testify. To focus on you. To keep my heart and mind on you. Begin to ask the Lord for grace. To keep, the Bible said, He shall keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. That your mind will be stayed on Christ and what is done for you, what is what is doing in you, what is doing through you, that you will not be distracted and what we and be looking at what the enemy is doing, what your people are doing, but you focus on what Christ is doing. Lord, we ask for that voice to focus on you, to focus on your workings in us and through us. Father, receive all the glory. Receive all the glory. In Jesus. Precious and glorious name we pray with us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen.